hear what God has in stock for you. There are bigger things than what you think. Amen. 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 There are actually bigger things than what you think. Because each time God moves, He is not in the business of petty, petty things. God is in the business of big things. That is why the Bible says that up to now you are not asked. Because all those things that you have been asking, most of you are asking crayfish. Asking crayfish for God to so You can catch crayfish from the sea. That's something that you, you, you yourself you cannot do. And when it happens to you, that is the only time that you will know that God is faithful. Hallelujah. Amen. But I greet you this wonderful morning in the name of Jesus Christ, Amen. who lives and reigns. He was a God of yesterday, today, and He is a God forever. The Bible says that He changed to not. He changed to not. No, no ounce of His strength will die off. Because He, he, never, he never gets old. He is never ever fired. Because nobody employed Him. <laughs> nobody employed Him. Nobody put Him there. There was, no, there was never an election to place God um, to where He is today. Amen. Amen. The Bible says that he became God on his own accord and he sits on his holy throne. He created all these mammoth things, material things that you see. He created spiritual things that you don't see. He created the Milky Ways and the heavenlies. He created all. You don't have any idea what is still behind you. This eyes that we see like this, we, we will not see anything. This, some, of, some of us are limited only around Kazakhstan. Kind of Germany is huge. We have not seen Germany itself. There are many cities and villages we have not seen. Let alone Europe. Then you talk about the various continents that are in the world you have not seen. What about the world you have not seen? The seas and the rivers, the forests that are there you have not seen. What about the Milky Ways, the moon, the star, the sun? You have not seen. You don't even know what, what God has actually created. You don't know. And, and, and the funny thing in it is that some people will still go around and say, God, God is not performing. Some, they even have in their own idea, fake and a cake idea that God is dead. God is no more dead. I now remember when Elijah was doing a kind of sacrifice with the prophets. And they were all talking about how powerful their gods were. The prophets were telling Elijah how powerful their gods were. Elijah was telling, Elijah was telling them how powerful his own body. And they had to do some competition, small little competition, to know who is powerful in you. And they laid a sacrifice on an altar. He said that you guys will start because I want to see the power of your God. Maybe I can just abandon my own God right now and join you. They place the altar and call upon their God. Call upon their God until they will cry. The Bible says that they began to tear themselves in anger because the God was not answering. Elisha, in his own absolute wisdom, said, Oh, call upon him. Maybe he may, he may be sleeping. Your God does not sleep. Amen. Amen. He neither slumber nor sleep. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Say that maybe that God is sleeping. Your God is sleeping. Please wake him up by shouting. Shout the more. Like blind Bartimaeus. When he heard that Jesus has come, he was shouting. The disciples said, Ah, I shut up. Keep quiet. And the Bible says that the more they say, Keep quiet, the more the man raised his voice. This blind Bartimaeus. Because you know, when you come between death and life, that is why it is mostly known that when a man is found between the, de the deep blue sea and a snake, he will hang on a snake. And all of us, we know that snakes are dangerous. Yeah. Most of us, when we see snake pass here, wow! You will scream and you jump. Somebody who couldn't jump, you will still jump. It doesn't matter. Because that time, extraordinary strength will come. Amen. Mm -hmm. And Eliza. Elijah told them, cry, cry the more. And as they were crying, nothing happened. He said, clear all this debt for me. And he put his own 
his own thing, his own sacrifice on the altar. And he said, pour water there because the fire that is coming, if you don't pour water, it will consume you. So that the water will give it time to cool the fire a little bit. You know, all of us, we know that fire and water with fire, they don't go. We use fire and water to quench fire. But he says that put water. And when they pour water and pour water and they pour water on the sacrifice, Elijah lift up his voice unto the Most High God, the great I am that I am, the Almighty who sits on his holy throne with all powers in his hand. Jehovah, arise! With no time, the sacrifice was consumed. That is the power of our Most High God. When you call upon him, he will answer you. Amen. He will come mightily unto you and he will show you great and mighty things that you have not seen. Hallelujah. Amen. Don't relent, family. This God is true. He doesn't lie. Our God exists. In fact, I don't even need to tell you that He exists because most of us, we have seen some of His manifestations upon our lives. Amen. Amen. Jehovah is there. And there is no way, there is no power on earth, there is no power beneath the earth, and there is also no power in heaven that can compare his power. No one can stand side by side with him. There is no one that is beautiful like him. Amen? Amen. Your God is good. And one thing, one thing that I love him is because the fact that he has all this power, he says that, come and let us listen together. Oh, this mammoth mighty God say, I should come and let us with my own filthy rack, righteousness and wisdom. He said, as you come, and let us listen together. He said, come unto me the way you are. We know you are filthy, you are, you are dirty, but he doesn't care. He said, come unto me, and I will still make you fishers of men. Come unto me. I have the ability to cleanse you. Because he, he, he has everything that he can do. And he says that he is willing and ready to help you, to sustain you. To pick you out of the dungeons, to clean you and make you the light that he has promised. He's there wants to make you a sword. That anytime you come across any decaying situation, that situation must balance up to have life and begin to breathe again. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. Amen. Which means that if you go through somebody, somebody's life, which that person is dead. That person's life will be revived again. Amen. We call it rejuvenation. Mm -hmm. When a life is rejuvenated, it means that it will become like that of a youth. And therefore, you would have lost nothing. Because it will give you the wisdom that you will begin to walk circumspectly like a wise person. And you redeem the time that has been passed, that has been lost, that the enemy stole. Now, the enemy does not steal all your property. It doesn't steal only what God has given to unto you, but the most important element, or the most valuable thing that you came with on earth is time. That you, me, we have 24 hours. The richest man, Bill Gates, Jeff uh, Bootses, they have all 24 hours in their hands. They don't have any one second above 24 hours. So when the enemy fool you and lift up your time, then you amount to nothing. Because all of us we need time to do anything. As we sit here, it is time that we are investing. We don't spend the time, we are investing the time. Because we are investing in our lives. Hallelujah. So don't take this time that you sit here for granted. Time is very, very important in our lives. Amen. Amen. But our women's conference is coming this Saturday. Amen. Amen. This Saturday, a willing and traveling women conference is going to be live in their house. Amen. Hallelujah. Is somebody excited about this? Amen. Women must be more, very, very excited Hallelujah. about Amen. this because it is actually tuned to all of you. Amen. Amen. So in this note, please do invite me. The time is 6 p.m., right? The time is 6 p.m. On Saturday and on Sunday. So it will kick off on Saturday, 6 p.m. So be here by 5 45.
Amen. Amen. Be here by 5.45 so we can make places ready for the other ones that are coming. Other ones that have been invited, visitors that are coming. If any visitor is coming in, into your house, you have to prepare the place. You have to go ahead and prepare the place. You will not want that the visitor come and surprise you. Take you by surprise. You will not want that the visitor come and be, and be fixing your own house. How are you going to feel? Feel so ashamed. I will feel so ashamed. Women, men, they say that uh, uh, men are more, they are bold, bolder than women. So if me, I can feel ashamed. I, I, I mean, you, then, <laughs> you, you will say, oh God, open the head and let me enter inside. So they will not see me. So, but to, to, you know, to keep, to keep all these kind of shameful situations apart, peaceful come. So, um, we will not be found 